Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm passionate about learning and education. My mission is to help 100,000 businesses leverage digital technologies to make an impact on the world. And I do that by helping businesses understand intelligent automation, merging technologies, and LinkedIn social media strategy. This helps improve their operational efficiency, profitability, and visibility. One of the most important parts of our society is the healthcare system. Quite often this industry is overlooked when it comes to people talking about shiny new technology like RPA and intelligent automation, but not today. Today we're going to talk about healthcare and how this industry is now educating itself on the art of the digitally possible and how it's developing a digital mindset that's impacting the sector, the staff who work in the sector and the patients who benefit from it. Today we have Claire. Claire, welcome. Would you mind introducing yourself and telling the audience a little bit more about what you do? Thanks, Kieran. Well, my own background has been always around health information management, information governance, and really learning early in my career through working in hospitals that information is not flowing very well and serving us as healthcare providers and our patients. Um, so I've always sort of kept having this thing flow through my mind of there's got to be a better way. And, you know, throughout my career, then I moved into HICWA for a number of years, working in information governance and setting information standards on things like interoperability so that we can start to teach systems to speak to each other and aid that flow of information. But from there, I moved on into the Department of Health, uh, into HSE corporate, working on the acute medicine program and also dipped into the private sector, working in digital health itself and also bringing together digital health organizations to aid the improvement of healthcare in Ireland through digital transformation. And I've finally landed uh, in education in this area. Um, a big part of what I do is uh, around educating healthcare providers at all levels and all backgrounds on, I guess it's the art of the possible and how to see the opportunities to join the dots of information across healthcare. And how do we reduce the administrative burden in healthcare? So I provide education um, on RPA and intelligent automation, uh, but also on wider digital health aspects to healthcare providers through RCSI in a, a postgraduate diploma. Oh, that's why we are going to delve into that today. And I can't wait to talk about that diploma that I think you created as well. Is there, Claire, a digital mindset within the healthcare sectors or are you coming across healthcare professionals who say, well, we've always done it this way? Mm. I think, you know, newer generations coming into healthcare were born digital. Um, you know, people often joke, my child was born with an iPad in their hand. Um, but there's a disconnect then when it comes to healthcare and how we do things. We see across other industries, digital transformation has completely changed how we interact uh, with different industries. And a good example is looking at transportation, public transportation, such as taxis. We use Uber now or similar apps uh, to order a taxi. I'm used to being able to look on my phone, uh, see a map of where the local taxis are, what it's going to cost me, who the driver is, if they've been validated and verified. And I expect that level of service now. I don't want to have to queue at a taxi rank and hope for the best for a couple of hours in the cold uh, of an evening waiting for a taxi. And that expectation is almost inherent now. That transformation happened uh, in a relatively short period of time. But if you compare that with healthcare, um, we see that disconnect. We haven't had that sort of light bulb moment where things have suddenly shifted. There are piecemeal implementations that have you know, facilitated quite big improvements, but I don't think we've gone all the way to developing that mindset, particularly in, you know, in delivery of healthcare. The job is the delivery of healthcare. It's not to sort of step back and say, you know, how do I become a technologist now? And that's where my interest lies. I don't think you need to be a technologist to be involved in digital health transformation. Uh, it, it, I love that analogy about Uber, because mm -hmm. more important than getting a taxi is probably my health. And therefore having that level of transparency and information, whatever else, I, I, I can only imagine it would actually help us from a medical or practitioner perspective as well. Maybe take away some of the mystery, maybe take away some of the fear or whatever else. So should healthcare workers be forced to take a digital qualification as part of their medical studies to try and drive digital transformation within the health sector? For example, I believe the Association of Accountants in Ireland 
have to pass an RPA exam to actually qualify? Should we be asking the same thing of all of our medical professionals? Well, I don't know if force is the right word because instantly that'll sort of, you know, uh, want people to move away from it. But I do think there's a place in undergraduate studies across uh, the clinical spectrum to educate people in what's possible uh, with digital transformation. And again, I come back to how to spot those opportunities. Um, I think, you know, it will it will remove that fear of sort of, you know, this is something completely outside of what I'm studying. It's not. It's part of what you're studying. Uh, so I do think there's a place to begin to introduce uh, modules or sessions uh, to, to start to build that digital mindset so that, you know, we encourage in terms of patient safety, all of our healthcare providers uh, to, to operate on, on a, a, a method of sort of continuous improvement. And I would see digital transformation as part of that. Uh, so it's not alien or different to what they're learning. It's, it's a big part of what they're learning. Um, with, it, with that in mind of, you know, continuous improvement, looking at how we can do things better a big part of that is the digital transformation aspect because that represents a giant leap forward in how we can do things better so we're we're talking about the front end here i suppose new professionals coming into the sector mm -hmm. but how do you convince someone in your role for example a cfo a senior medical professional someone who has built a healthcare budget Excel sheet and has always done what they've always done in a particular mm -hmm. way to move toward digital ways of working? So for people within the system, uh, quite often I find that they've found a way to make things work. So take any process, it might be financial in healthcare or, or involved in healthcare delivery um, or quality and regulation and patient safety. It could be any area. But what has often happened is as our health system grows and the burden on our health system grows, the administrative burden of providing services grows probably at a more increasing rate. These are really important aspects so that we can track budgets and we have an understanding of where money is being spent and also are we getting value for money. But ultimately, when people have found a way to, to make things work, what's happened is they've, they've figured out a way to get to the end goal of a process in a very convoluted way. Yeah. And while it works, it may not represent the best use of time and resources to, to get that process done. And so it's, it's taking a step back to look at, could we do that a different way? And I don't think there's any alienation of existing staff in, in sort of building that, that mindset. Um, if anything, it should be welcomed. People do become attached to, to convoluted processes sometimes because it took so much effort to finally get to the end goal and make it work. And when you take you know, an area like finance, they may often not be aware that a process is not working very efficiently because as far as they're concerned, if it works, it works. Uh, so you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but the fact is that you know, across the health, healthcare spectrum, um, it's under a huge burden and um, we've got to find better, more efficient ways of getting things done. And I think intelligent automation and RPA are, are prime examples of low cost, high efficiency and easy to implement um, type of technology uh, that can really transform how we do things and free people up to actually carry out the business of delivering care, which is going to be the thing that really attracts you know, healthcare workers to learning more about this. I can imagine it would. I can imagine mundane, monotonous paperwork probably won't. Oh, what use cases are there, Claire, in terms of medical, the medical industry? You mentioned finance. That's pretty typical. But for mm -hmm. people who don't know the healthcare sector, where do you try and introduce intelligent automation and RPA? What are the yeah. use cases and examples? I think one of the one of the greatest examples, um, and particularly, you know, we, we've we're at the tail end, hopefully, of a pandemic. Um, but during that time, um, you know, there was a bit of a leap forward into sort of quicker decisions around digital uh, implementation. But a, a project that I saw that's a really good example, a really good use case, is in infection control. So already, the administrative burden in infection control is quite high. Hospital acquired infections. 
um, have always been um, sort of there. They're always present. Uh, they must be reported on. And there are numerous forms that have to be filled out as part of that when a case is identified. So when, when COVID-19 hit, um, the, the number of hospital acquired infections went up a significant amount and therefore the reporting requirement went up a significant amount. Infection control nursing staff are required to provide care to people with hospital acquired infections, but also to tackle the administrative burden of reporting on those hospital acquired infections. So you can imagine that, you know, a workforce under pressure like that, something has to give. And with care being the priority, it was very difficult to maintain um, the administrative requirements of reporting. And that reporting is hugely important because it informs treatment, prevention, cure of, of all sorts of hospital acquired infections and how to try to make sure that doesn't happen again. So the implementation of RPA um, to automatically fill out a plethora of forms and submit them and get an acknowledgement back that this is being filled out correctly, all done by a robot uh, automatically with a report provided to the nurses on, on what cases have been reported up through the system, fulfilling the mandatory requirement. Um, and it, it, it took something like 60% off their daily workload. Oh, wow. Massive. I can, I, because I can imagine folks don't go into healthcare industry to do that paperwork. It is that essential care piece. No. But there will be someone looking at budgets because from what I'm reading in the press and we're hearing every day, there isn't an exhaustible supply of cash. So no. how do you help hospitals, healthcare businesses or or similar, Claire, develop you know, a business case for automation that also has a self-sustainable approach? Because mm -hmm. are you trying to get nurses and doctors to do RPA? How are you building that case and the sustainability of this as well? Yeah. One of, one of the wonderful things about automation is that the impacts of it are immediately measurable, uh, even perhaps before implementation. So, you, you know, the finance person can compare the cost of this versus the saving when it comes down to the brass tax of just finance. So you take a process as it currently works and um, you explore it from end to end in great detail and you map out the costings in terms of time, resources, money, uh, efficiency and things like patient experience, provider experience, all of those things, outcome improvements at, you know, at the other end of the scale. You can measure all of those things in, in the current status quo, and then you can map out in advance of implementation what sort of saving against those key parameters that you're going to make if you deploy RPA in this environment to this process. And then it's very easy to calculate, well, what is the cost of this? And so then, uh, you know, what is the return on investment? And at what point do we hit hit the, the sort of that golden point when we've broken even and almost gone into profit on this? So, I mean, it's not that people are going to lose their jobs uh, far from it. It's that they're freed up to provide care. But for the finance people, it's a very easy business case to build um, because the return on investment is generally months, not years. Um, so it's, it's a very fast return on investment. And the improvement to the quality of people's lives in terms of working as a healthcare provider, but also to patients who get to experience more face to face time with their provider, a really important aspect that will never be replaced. And, um, you know, the benefits, the benefits really stack up uh, for this type of technology. It certainly sounds like it. But yeah. just to my probably second question, Claire, uh, who's building the automations themselves? And then who is maintaining the automations? Because as you and I know, building them is the first part of the process and you mm -hmm. need talent to do that. And then the run, the business, time, cost or development happenings all need to occur. So how are you getting the staff to do this and do it in an affordable way that fits within healthcare budgets? Yeah. Well, again, one of the wonderful things about automation is that it's quite simple. Uh, in terms of technology. Um, you will always have people in healthcare who embrace efficiency gains, who, who love to see ways to do things better and will embrace technology. And there are opportunities now from within the healthcare sector to educate people first on spotting those processes while it may work 
actually viewing it through a different lens to say it's working, but it's taking half of our time and it shouldn't. So what could we do better there? And thinking, could that be an opportunity for, for automation? And it was actually a nurse within that context that spotted the opportunity for infection control improvements. She had no technical background whatsoever, but she 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 had that, that light bulb moment of there's got to be a better way. And she was led in the direction of automation. So from within the health service, building that digital mindset just to spot the opportunities, see where the bottlenecks are, almost think about what are the parts of my job that I absolutely can't stand, that I felt like I didn't sign up for, um, and, and then start to look at automation. And then we have something called the School of Automation that can actually train people from within the health sector to begin to program robots themselves. Um, there are digital tools out there that, that enable them to do that in a very low tech way. So you don't need to become a computer scientist to be able to do these things. Uh, and through the School of Automation, you're supported all the way through so that by the end of it, you actually have a tangible solution for your healthcare context that can be deployed and not supervised, supervised by experts in the field. Uh, such that, you know, I, I guess, you know, when you're, when you're new at something, it, it's not going to be the most complex solution. But then you can grow from there and it can proliferate across the system. And one good solution in an organization will get people thinking, where else could we do this? And that's the sort of mindset that we're trying to build. I really like that. And, and just you mentioned earlier on, or did I hear it correctly? you've introduced a postgraduate course as well to try and educate people. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Because I'm sure. passionate about education and how sure. that changes people's lives. I am too. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I don't come from a technical background myself. I've health informatics background, um, which goes, you know, some way into the technical, but I couldn't code to save my life. Um, <laughs> But I started to learn about how to spot opportunities and then I wanted to pass that on. So at the Graduate School of um, Healthcare Management at RCSI, uh, myself and a leadership expert have created uh, this nine month, uh, it's a postgraduate professional diploma in leading digital health transformation. And so the important part of that is that it's a blending of healthcare leadership skills and developing a digital mindset with an understanding of the technology trends in healthcare, the impacts they could have, and how, how we could actually get those to deployment in your own healthcare context. Mm. So the course is designed such that by the end of it, at your final assignment, you will have a business case built for a deployment of digital health within your own healthcare context. Uh, and that's the goal, that some of these actually move forward to become real world implementations. Oh, wow. So if I was uh, summarizing near the end, Claire, what advice would you give to hospitals, healthcare professionals, or anyone in the industry who are starting to think about implementing RPA, IA, or thinking about developing digital services for their healthcare organization? I'd say firstly, don't think it's, a, it's an issue for your IT department. It's not. They manage the nuts and bolts of your infrastructure. This is a project for you. This is something for you as a healthcare provider at any level to start thinking about. Never think, I can't do that. You are the most qualified, in fact, to be doing just that because you are working in that context. You are feeling the pain every day of the parts of your job, looking around you in your department at what's not working well and where the bottlenecks are. So you're uniquely qualified to be the one to step forward and say there's got to be a better way. Uh, and moving on from there through things like the School of Automation, uh, the, the Leading Digital Health Transformation Diploma, you've got lots of opportunity to educate yourself further uh, to actually bring these things forward and make a real difference uh, in your own healthcare context. Well, I really like that because sometimes, as you say, people look to their IT teams but the technology is reasonably simple and intuitive and therefore with a professional's mind understanding intimately their their context or area and then developing some of those skills or guiding others could make a massive difference claire if if people want to find out more about the digital diploma they want to find out more about you and the art of the possible uh, how do people get in touch with you sure 
Um, so for any of that, and indeed about the School of Automation as well, uh, you can contact me at claire at hdhealth.ie. That's Claire with no I, so C-L-A-R-E, like the county, uh, at hdhealth.ie. Uh, and I'll provide my, my phone contact details as well if that's relevant. Go for it. Go yeah, for it. I think people will want to talk to you. And remember, mm -hmm. this is Ireland as well, so there'll be an international dial code if you're ringing outside of Ireland. So you better give that as well. Sure. So uh, I can be contacted at plus 353-86-385-6343. Fantastic. I'll put in LinkedIn and everything else we can get because I, I think, Claire, the one thing I've always seen about the healthcare industry is everybody shares. So mm -hmm. if this video goes out and people can see it, please, folks, do share. Put it out as wide as you can. Get in touch with Claire as well to hear some of the case studies and learn a little bit more about the education of digital mindsets as well inside of the healthcare industry. But Claire, for today, that is fantastic. Healthcare is not an area that gets much publicity about all of the great work that's being done to develop, you know, new minds and uh, re-educate existing minds in the most wonderful way toward digital healthcare practices. So that was brilliant. Thank you so much. I learned lots today. Thanks so much. And it was great to be here.